Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel and today I'm talking about sights. I'm talking about the MetroLite, Metro FRBS. So there are no less than six different variations of these night sights. So the idea is that you have iron sights but with tritium inserts. Maybe I'd see because the glare from the lighting. Well, I guess we'll open them up. It's easier to see. But the idea is that they're AR-15 sights, but they have tritium inserts, so they're also night sights. That's pretty cool. So we got the uh, front sight here. A little Allen wrench to help us get in there. We've got a little uh, rear sight. We'll take them out. And these are folding sights, so that we fold up, they'll lay down, and they'll come up like this. And you got, uh, you got a nice pair of iron night sights. Tritium iron sights. And I said there are six different variations of these night sights. So you have the cheapest version, which is basically this front sight. But with this rear sight, but instead of having four tritium inserts, it has two. All right. This is the medium priced one and it has this front sight and this rear sight with the four. Then there's a slightly more expensive one that has what appears to be a wider front sight with either orange paint or orange tritium. I'm not sure which one that is, but it's physically wider or appears to be a physically wider sight. I didn't care for that. So we're going with this, these sights today. And if it helps, this is model ML40320. And I said there's six different variations, right? So I only mentioned three. Well, you can get all of them either black or FDE. So that's kind of a minor thing. I got with black because that's the one my store had. And these ones cost me $150. So what did I buy these? Well, I have my HD Defense rifle here. And I like it. But it feels a little heavy sometimes. It's got this Burris optic on here, Burris prepper mount, and Burris let me see, P oh, sorry, RT6 scope. And the mount and the scope together weigh like two pounds. So it went from being a relatively lightweight gun to being kind of a heavy gun. Now, if you want to lighten up your gun by giving you a scope, you can do a couple of things. You can buy a red dot, you can buy an S reticle scope, you can buy some kind of in point thing. I decided, you know what, let's, let's go back to basics. Let's go, let's do some iron sights. Let's do some nice, very lightweight iron sights. I just love the idea of iron sights with tritium inserts. That seemed like such a cool thing. Historically, there have been rifles, military rifles, that had iron sights. What comes to mind is like the Yugo SKS rifle had iron sight insert. So this is not like a, a new concept. It's just kind of an old concept being brought back. And I really like this idea. And I just really like the idea of tritium inserts on AR-15 iron sights. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause for a minute. I'm going to take off this scope. I'm going to put on these sights. Let's see what the directions say. I, I, I cheated. I know what the directions say. But there really isn't much in here. Uh, okay. Uh, all right, this looks like warranty information, but the instructions are literally just, you know, loosen the Allen screw, use the provided Allen key, mount the sight on the Picatinny rail, tighten the Allen screw, <laughs> use the provided key. It just, the, the instructions are literally just like, you know, put them on and tighten it. Um, I prefer if maybe you could have included something like the distance? Is there a certain distance these sites are supposed to be spaced between each other? If not, I'm just going to assume to take the maximum distance, I'll put the front sight here and the rear sight about there. But it would have been nice if you kind of specified how far apart they're supposed to be. That would have been a nice touch. Like I said, we're going to pause here, we're going to come back, and we're going to take a look at how this gun is lightened up and looks with these iron sights. So, how did we do? Well, okay, so we took off the scope, the Burr scope, which weighs approximately two pounds, like 1.7 or two pounds. 
which in the hand doesn't feel that bad when you add it to like a, a rifle it's already six seven pounds if you add that weight it is a lot and we got the meprolite sights now I thought this was gonna be something where you like you push on this button like right here and it's gonna pop up uh, it does not you have to actually fold them up they snap up and down I was not expecting that but it seems pretty positive So we got our front sight there. I wanted to show this on camera. I wanted to show the night sights on camera, but if I did another take where it was very difficult to do, but they are akin to something like handgun sights. Let's see this other one. Okay, so this precision sight, come on, focus, does not have the night sight option. It's only the closer range sight that does. So that's a consideration. But I would say it's pretty similar to something like a handgun sight. It does work. It does do its job. I moved this a little bit farther forward. I had it here. It seemed like it was too close to my face. I moved it forward a couple inches here. Now, Meprolite didn't give me a, rack, a, a recommended distance, but that should be about 15, I think here to here is 17 and a half inches. I measured it. So coming in here, this is close to 16 inches. This is about a 16 inch sight radius. And I just ha I had to move this forward because it was too close to my face. And okay, so we're looking, doing good so far. We got the sights, they seem pretty good. Uh, they you know, screw on here. You know, you got the bolt that goes through, you just tighten it up, seems to go on pretty easy. Uh, now I'm gonna take it to the range, and do a little shooting with it, see how I like it. Now that's a little subjective because it means that the gun has to be good, the barrel has to be good, the shooter has to be good. So we're going to probably give the sights the benefit of the doubt. Just make sure that they work well enough. And after I'm done shooting this, I'm going to come back and tell you what I think. So how did we do? Well, uh, you know, I was really sold on the premise of the idea of night sights on a rifle. That seemed like a really cool concept. And in practice, you know, actually walking around and in the dark and using this, I kind of came to the conclusion very quickly, well, you know, if it's so dark that I would need to use these night sights, then it would just make a lot more sense just to turn on a weapon light. Thus kind of negating the need for these night sights, these Reprolite night sights. Um, so yeah, you, you, you think something's really cool, and then when you actually go to do it, you're like, wait, that doesn't make sense. And I just kind of very quickly came to the conclusion, well, you know, you really don't need night sights on a rifle if you have a weapon light. Now, if you didn't have a weapon light, I guess that makes sense. Maybe it's a backup to the weapon light, but it just seemed that, you know, walking around my basement with the uh, iron sights just made sense to just turn on the weapon light. So, uh, <laughs> maybe that's why we don't see in a whole lot of different, uh, different guns, different, different sights. Um, all right, so the, the night sights might be kind of a gimmick, kind of a, you know, hokey thing. How's the accuracy? Well, I'll say that at 25 yards, I was able to ring this out of the gun. Now, some of the other group, some of the other shots weren't as good, but I want to give the sights the benefit of the doubt. You know, there's a whole lot of factors going to, think, to things like this. The shooter, the sights, the ammo, the barrel, all that stuff. And uh, I was able to get this 25 yards, and that's pretty much the best I did. And uh, everything else is a little bit a little bit more spaced out. So I'm going to give Meprolite the benefit of the doubt. The sights are good. I said, I don't know. Uh, you know, I was really hot on this idea. I was really interested in it. And then when I actually went to, to use them, I was like, hmm, yeah, they're all right. The sight picture, the sight picture of actually having this open part right here, and this, it's hard to show on camera, and this, you know, this, basically this part right here is kind of completing the circle of the front sight. Um, I didn't super care for that sight picture, and honestly, I feel like something like Magpul backup iron sights, which are probably about half the cost of this, I think overall it's just a better product. Now this takes up more space on the rail, I would think. But they flip up nice. I think that's cool, flip up nice and positive. 
And the side picture, sorry, hit the uh, try by there, which I sometimes do. The side picture, uh, I think it's just overall a little bit better. So without that the novelty of the Freedom Inserts, I don't think these Meprolite sites have much to offer. They just have a feeling of kind of, I won't say cheapness, I don't want to be misrepresented, but sometimes certain things don't feel like quality. And that's hard to qualify. But the Meprolite sites don't feel like $150 sites. And maybe that cost comes from the tritium inserts themselves. I understand that. Just, I don't know. I don't know. I just I just love the idea going into it and actually using them. I'm like, eh, they're okay. So if you want some backup iron sights, yeah. I would not actually think, I, I would not use this as my primary sights. I would not. You know, maybe I'm not good enough of a rifle shooter to be effectively using these rifle sights at past you know, 50, 100 yards. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I didn't have a, a, an easy time picking up the sight picture. Um, the sights don't exude quality to me. And honestly, I would just as well throw on those Magpul backup iron sights than these. I don't know. So that would be my opinion. I would say I would not recommend these, to be honest. I think at the price point, uh, they're a little expensive for what they are. Again, I think the Magpul backup iron sights are just as good as these um, without the tritium inserts. And I guess I understand the tr tritium inserts add to the cost, but practically speaking, I don't think they give you that much. They sound cool, but I think in practice, don't give you that much capability. So I guess that's it. I'm not going to say they're terrible. I'm not going to say they don't work, because they do work. I'm just saying, at the price, I'm not really sure if they're they're worth it. And this is just my, uh, uh, what is this, uh, APF lower my and uh, 7.62 by 39 upper Bear Creek Arsenal upper, which I should shoot this more. This is a pretty fun gun to shoot. I should shoot that more. And I think I'm going to end up putting the scope back on. I actually weigh this. This is 26 ounces. So... A little bit lighter than I thought, but still kind of a heavy rifle. I think I'm just going to deal with the weight and put this back on. Anyway, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel. Don't think I have much to add. I will see you next time. Please do all that like, share, and subscribing. Thank you, and goodbye.